All right, we have 705, and we're going to get started, Sister Amanda and Sister Spencer. Thank you for coming in. God bless you. God bless you, Pastor. God bless you, Mother. Sister Pastor and everybody. God bless you, Mother. We want to say we thank God tonight for each and every one of you that have signed on so far, and there may be others a little bit later. But we're going to go ahead and begin our Bible study on tonight. So let us pray. Father God in heaven, we thank you, Lord. Thank you once again for what you have done and what you are about to do. Thank you for how grateful you are and how great you are to us, O oh God. You're better to us than we are to ourselves. And Lord, we just ask you, we just want to say thank you for everything that you do. Oh, God, because you don't have to do it, but you do because of the love that you have for us. And we want to say thank you today. Now, Lord, we ask that you look on our president as she's recovering. Oh, God, continue to work on her, continue to bless her body from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. Oh, God, continue to bless her, oh, God. Uh, continue to bless Sister Renelle, which she went through, oh, God. You already know. You are a healer, and we thank you. And then there's others, oh God, that we may not call by name, but each and every one of us is on the line today. We ask them a special blessing upon them, that they will be blessed, delivered, set free, and that the doors of heaven will just open wide in the window, and yes. blessings will just flow down upon your people. Yes, Lord. And God will give you the praise. Mm -hmm. Now, Lord, we ask that you touch our teacher tonight, oh, Lord, that she you. may deliver your word. Give it to a powerful God that you can deliver it <laughs> with the unction of the Holy Ghost. And Lord, if we thank yes. you for Bless her in your, your name, we pray. Thank God. And amen. Mm -hmm. amen. We thank God tonight. We're in lesson six. And the, tonight's subject is power to receive good things from God. Power to receive good things from God. Don't we all need some good things from God? I tell you, he will do just that. Yeah. Real quickly, our background reading, our central verse is Jeremiah 5 and 25. And then our background readings, Deuteronomy 33 and 6, Psalms 84, 11, Ecclesiastics 2, 24, Luke 11, 13, 12 through 32, 12 and 32, Romans 8, 28, 2 Corinthians 9 and 8, and then we have Titus 2, 9 through 10. And our devotional reading is Joshua 23, 1 through 15. So once again, our lesson, power to receive good things from God. We thank God for our teaching tonight. We're going to turn it into the end of Sister Angie. Let us say amen for her. Amen. 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 God Amen. Be... Hello. God bless everyone. Good to see you all. See your name if you're not on the screen, but I know you're here by name, right? Mother Peace, God bless you. Good to see you with God us. Bless you, baby. God bless you. <laughs> I greet the pastor and Elder Russian earlier and uh, Sister Fanny and uh, Sister Russian to each and every one of you. Um, um, when, Sister Winnie, my sister. Sister Winnie is there, and my brother James. Each of you, I hate to miss anybody. Sister Amanda, and and uh, I know your mom is back there, so I'm waving to her too. <laughs> Sister Spencer, good to have each and every one of you. And we're gonna get right on into this lesson. And I'm just gonna help ask that you join join in. Uh, give me some feedback. Help me out, please. <laughs> um, uh, I haven't been too steady um, 
uh, really heavily focused on this particular lesson like I usually am, but I did go through it. And so we're going to ask the Holy Spirit to bring out whatever it is he desires for us to hear on tonight. All right. So, um, um, and, and Cindy, I think I, I'm, I have one little bit that I'm going to be sharing if you don't mind. So if that can be opened and ready for me, that would be, that would be good. Our topic, we're lesson six, and I hope everyone have their books and power. The, it doesn't say the power. It says power to receive good things from God. Power to receive good things from God. And so we're going to get right on into our reading. Um, we have uh, several scriptures. And so, as the pastor read our central verse, which was found in Jeremiah 5 and 25, and pray for me, saints, pray for me, saints. I feel a little shaky on the inside, but I'm going to make it through this by the power of the Holy Ghost. All right. Oh, power. All right. That answers my question. What is this power to receive? Where? Okay. Let's see if that's it. All right. Uh, and Nick, uh, um, Jeremiah 5 and 25, the King James says, your iniquities have turned away these things and your sin, your sins with an S, have withholden good things from you. Um, the wick your wickedness has deprived you of these wonderful blessings. You, your sins has robbed you, wow, of all these good things. That the Lord has made. So, so your iniquities, your wickedness have deprived you, kept from you the goodness of the Lord. Your sins uh, has robbed you. Because these things God wants to give to us. He loves us and He and He loves to bless us. And He loves to give us good things. But because of our sins and our iniquities, and let's look at some scriptures that's going to bear that out, if you will. We, um, I, I was going to go further up, but um, that verse just right there pretty much stands alone pretty good. Um, let's go into our, let's go to Deuteronomy. That's one of our uh, by background scriptures, Deuteronomy. So it's so we saw right off the bat, and I love the way uh, the Bible works. Uh, it tells us what's our problem is first, and what we need to correct first, and what why why we're having problems, huh? Uh, why we're not receiving what we feel like um, the Lord has for us right off the bat. That's what our central. Um, Verses telling us, but if we go to our Deuteronomy, our first scripture in background, let's see what uh, um, <clears throat> what that has to say, and how we're gonna look at all these scriptures and see how they all fit together. And uh, I want you to be thinking about what we're hearing in these scriptures because uh, we want to know is the topic is power to receive. So what is that power? So we have to be looking at it with that. And listening to it with that ear, what is the power? I mean, we know when we receive good things because we know what good things are. We know that all good things come from the Lord. Is that right? Comes from God. But what is the power to receive? Who's, who has the power? Where's it coming from? What, what are we talking about here? Okay. So we know to me, that's the lesson trying to see what the power is. Because like I said, we just heard in our central verse, what keeps us from the good things that God, our good God and Father in heaven, get, wants to give us and bless us with. Let's go to um, 33, Deuteronomy 33. We're going to read verse 6. And then we uh, let's just read that verse. And then I want to go up two more verses from that just to, to see what's going on. But 33 verse 6 says, Let Reuben live and not die. Let him not let uh, and let not his men be few. Now, anybody know who Reuben is? Real quick, that was a 
but we know we're in the book of Deuteronomy and we're dealing with the children of Israel, right? Um, That's but, Solomon's son, right? Whose son? Solomon? Mm-mm, 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 mm-mm. Which, Jacob's son. Yeah, Jacob's son. Uh, anybody know which which son? Um, where he falls in the line of the twelve born? Hmm? I didn't hear you. The oldest? Okay. Yes, Reuben being the oldest, the firstborn of Jacob. Am I right about that? Anybody want to check that fact? <laughs> Thank you, Sister Cindy and uh, Brother James. Yeah. All right. So it says to let him. And so if you know the story, if you know the history uh, and um, about Reuben, don't let him die. Let not Reuben die, and then and then not his men be few. So the tribe of Reuben, don't let it be a few, but let it be a a thrive, a a, a a a large a group of people. Okay, uh, the old um, King James, not let it be few. It talks kind of backwards. It says, "Let it." In other words, let it be a great number of of people in his. Uh, uh, amongst the Reubenites. <laughs> I'm losing my words already. It's too early to be losing my words. But anyway, uh, let's go up to verse four and see what that's all about. But actually, we have to go to verse one because I need you to see something here. And we need to see who's talking when it says let Reuben. Okay, so... And there's a good reason for that. So let's do verse one through verse six. Okay. And so it says, <clears throat> are you ready? Everybody have your Bibles. I have a header that says Moses bless the tribes, blesses the tribes. And this is the blessing wherewith Moses, the man of God, bless the children of Israel before his death. Before Moses' death, he said, and he said, The Lord came from Sinai and rose up from Sarah unto them. Unto them. The Lord came and rose up unto them. He shined forth from Mount Paran, and he came with 10,000 of saints from his right hand went a fierce law for them, for the saints. So the Lord is here. He has shined from corner to corner, from end to end, all around. And these are the different um, directions that the Lord has come in unto them. And he came with from, from his right hand. With all, with the ten thousands of his saints with the right hand and, and with the fears of the law for, for them. All right. Yeah. I should just read and not try to explain as I'm going, but I keep, okay, here we go. Uh, verse two, verse three. Yay. He loved the people. All his saints are in thy hands. Um, <clears throat> and they sat down and there at thy feet, everyone shall receive of thy words of the words of the Lord. They sat down and to receive of the words of the Lord. Moses commanded us a law, even the inheritance of the congregation of Jacob. He spoke to us all and he was king of Jeshurun, when he heard when, and he was king of Jeshurun when the heads of the people and the tribes of Israel were gathered together. Now, the first thing he says at this point, they're all gathered together, sitting down at the feet of the Lord because it was the Lord that came in right to speak to them. The first thing he, he he remember it says he he um was going to give them a commandment verse four Moses commanded us a law starting with Reuben 
Let Reuben live and not die. And let not his men be few. His nation of men, they're going to be great. This was the Lord saying this. I, I meant to ask you who was speaking here. <laughs> Who's saying this here? But it's, it's Moses that's leading. God's using Moses, but it's the Lord that's speaking. He is the one that appeared amongst the people. Amen. So it's Moses, it's the Lord that is speaking. And that's what he said. And so if you know the story of Reuben, well, of course he's first because he's the oldest, but for the Lord to say, let him live and not die, is because the Lord is gracious, right? We know his sin and his iniquities, right? And we know how uh, his, his, his father didn't really bless him because of what he has done, right? But the Lord is coming and saying, don't let him die. So um, what happened here after Moses started with Reuben, he went all the way down the line with all 12 of the children of Jacob, the sons of Jacob, and with their blessings. This is just before he, um, he was to die. He blessed each and every tribe. And so the tribe of Reuben, and not, not doing it himself, we know that the Lord is here. And he's leading and he's speaking. And he blessed the tribe of Reuben. That's the word I was looking for all along. Tribe of Reuben. Okay, here we go. So if I get kind of goofy, it's because I'm getting kind of nervous for some strange reason. But the Lord is blessing. All right, you guys look so serious and quiet. <laughs> That's what's making me nervous. <laughs> All right, so so you're saying to yourself, so what's that all about? <clears throat> it's showing the love and graciousness of God, and I'm going to show you something. You see where it says in verse 5, and he was king of Yeshurun. Who was king of Yeshurun? And who is, what is Jeshurun? And so this is where I'm going to go and share with you because this is really going to open up who he's talking about in this verse and what it means okay we say god has a lot of names right i haven't heard anybody call this name out in there hallelujah yeshua yeshua all right here we go let's go into our our um uh share here and uh I know I didn't lose it. Come on. Oh there it is. There it is. Ooh, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. See? You guys praying for me. And here's the share. It's reading. It's reading. Um we're gonna be reading. And if I can get a reader, this is uh what does it means that God is the God of Yeshuim. Yeshuim. All right. So let's go ahead on and read some of this. And I want you to really listen to it because this is this is really precious. It really, it really is good. Okay, so you see the question. What does that mean? Okay. And so can I get a first reader? Just that first paragraph all the way down. It's I'm going to need your help in reading. Can you all see that? Are you with me? Yes, Sister Angela. Um, I can't really see it to help read it. Okay, somebody. somebody mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll read through this verse first part, but help me out. Saying, um, it's quite a few of you. Come on, help me out. Okay. In Isaiah... Chapter 44, verses 1 and 2, God comforted his people with these words. But now listen, Jacob, my servant, Israel, whom I have chosen. This is what the Lord says. He who made you, this is what the Lord says. He who made you, who formed you in the belly and who will help you. Do not be afraid, Jacob, my servant, Yes, you ran, 
whom I have chosen. Now look where that word Yeshuaim falls in at. Do not be afraid, Jacob, my servant, Yeshuaim, whom I have chosen. Okay, the next paragraph. Just follow me here. The name Yeshuan means upright one or blessed one in the in a parallel in a parallelism of Isaiah poetry. Yeshuam is a synonym for Jacob in the previous line. Now let's look at that line. Go back up. Do not be afraid, Jacob, my servant, Yeshuaim, whom I have chosen. So it says that Yeshuaim is a synonym, synonym for Jacob in the previous line of what I just read up there. Okay. Did you catch that? Okay. So it says the name Yeshuaim means upright one. Do not be afraid, Yeshuaim, upright one or blessed one. Okay, so we see that Yeshua is a poetic reference to the nation of Israel. It is a term of endearment. The Greek Septuagint translate Yeshua as beloved one, using the form of the word agape, using a form of the word agape. The name Yeshua is used for four times in the book of Deuteronomy and Isaiah. In each case, the name occurs in a poetic setting and refers to Israel, God's beloved people. Okay. Can somebody pick it up right there? In Deuteronomy. We make it larger. We can't see it. Oh, you really can't see it, huh? It's too small. Oh, the size. Oh, okay. I can read um, Ju um the, the next one, um, um, Sister Angela. Go, go I can ahead. see it. Go, go ahead. Thank you. Um, except you might have to move it over a little more to the to the right because it cuts off. It says in Deuteronomy 32, Moses rehearses the history of Israel to that point, including a time when the Israelites were unfaithful to God in, and then I can't see. In the, in the wilderness, okay. In the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Jeshurun grew fat and kicked. Filled with food, they became heavy and sleek. They abandoned the God who made them and rejected the rock, their savior, Deuteronomy 32 and 15. Mm -hmm. As Moses began his final blessings on the tribes of Israel, he says the Lord was king over Jeshurun. When the leaders of the people assembled along with the tribes of Israel, Deuteronomy 33 and 5. Mm -hmm. I read it, continue reading. Uh-huh, if you will. Thank you. Okay. Then, as Moses in, ends the same series of blessings, mm -hmm. he says, There is no one like the God of Jeshua, who rides across the heavens to help you, and on the clouds in his majesty, the eternal God in your refuge, and unearth, at unearth, underneath, underneath, are the everlasting arms, Deuteronomy 33, 26, 26 and 27 verse. Mm-hmm. So Israel you still could be called okay. Jeshua okay. because of God's mercy and forgiveness. Isaiah starts out his book with a condemnation of Israel's sin, calling the people a sinful nation. Who, whose guilt is great and a broad of evildoers given to corruption, Isaiah 1 and 4. Yet God still tenderly calls them Jeshua, mm. the upright one. The children of Israel forsook 
the Lord. They have spurned the Holy One of Israel and turned their backs on him. Verse 4. Yet God still lovingly calls them Jeshurun. Mm. The beloved one, Jeshurun, is God's grace on display. All right. All right. You can stop right there because we have so much more to do. But did you get that picture? I did it. Did you hear that last sentence that you just said? That read that that last sentence after verse four. It says, "Yet God still lovingly calls them Jeshurun, the beloved one. Jeshurun is God's grace on display. God's grace. Nothing but His love, <laughs> His power, <laughs> and His still." Mm. Love them in spite of, just like he loves us today. Mm-hmm. You got, you got it. Isn't wasn't that beautiful? That was so beautiful. It, it started out telling us what it means, what Joshua run means, the beloved, God's people, and he loves God people. And look at what all look at that verse, how they treated him. How the how the the children of Israel just turned away from him, and just treated their God, our God, uh, horribly. And God still called them Yeshua because just like a parent, isn't that just like a parent? But that's still my child. It's still my child, <laughs> and I still love him. <laughs> All right, I love this part here. This last part it says. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. That's our God. That's our God. Amen. Unless God has done these things for us, huh? Where would we be? Where would we be? I'm trying to go back to that one part where, where, um, it's right there. It says, Jeshurun grew fat and kicked filled with food they became heavy and sleep they abandoned the god who made them and rejected the rock of their salvation deuteronomy 32 and verse 15 yet god still called them jeshua his arms are still stretched stretched out still to his chosen people and now that's talking to us as well today. Amen. That was beautiful. I had to share that the word came up in our, our reading. Of course, uh, I just went one verse up from it. But to understand the sixth verse, I had to go up. And, and when I read that, the understanding there, that was just powerful to me. And I said, I have to share this because what the power to receive good things from God. And God wants to give good things to his children. He don't want us to be lack of anything. Look at, um, we'll go to Psalm. If you go to Psalm 84 and 11, let's say, like, take a look at that real quick. This is in our lesson. I'm going through the, through the uh, background scriptures. So, so don't, don't worry. I'm not, um, at living too much on this lesson. Um, Psalm 84 and 11. Look at this. <clears throat> and if you all want to help in the reading, just say, I got it and start reading. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. 
O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusts in thee. Isn't that a beautiful scripture? Oh, oh, he says that um, for the Lord God is the sun and the shield. He's a protector. He's our protector. He's a, he's a, we know what the natural sun is like. We, we got a good dose of it this week, haven't we? Good dose of it. I couldn't hardly walk outside without, oh, uh, oh, uh, he is our sun and shield. Not only is he the, the protector from the sun, he is the sun. <laughs> Because he created all things. And so he brings us the sun and he knows that the sun will scorch us. And so he becomes our shield. <laughs> but we need the sun, right? But we need protection from the sun. That's our God. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that what? Walk upright. Walk upright. Now, um, it has the word grace in here. And I remember in one of our lessons, Elder uh, Baxson said that there was two kinds of graces, right? Anybody remember those two graces? The two, devil, two kinds of graces that comes from God. Is Elder Baxson with us? I'm not sure. I can't read everybody so quickly. But um, any anybody remember that? His common grace was one. And that was the first one that he used, right? You remember him saying that now? Common grace. God sends the sun to shine on the just as well as the unjust. The rain on the just as, un, un, as much as the unjust. It's common grace. We need the sun and we need the rain because we need the crops. Without the sun and the rain, we will be in a famine. A bad one, huh? Uh-huh. Our crops, our, our 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 grains and things would not make it. And so, but he and that feeds everybody. The world. Yeah, and they that dwell therein, the earth, it belongs to the Lord. And he can control what happens on this earth as far as uh, his blessings and his goodness. But as far as uh, he, if you remember in the book of Genesis, how he destroyed the world. But it did, what was his promise after that? That, that uh, and I think Mother Peace had used this before. Uh Summer, winter, fall, and, and, you know, all the seasons will remain. Yeah, he destroyed the world, but he's not going to do it again, not by a flood. And as long as the earth remains, winter, summer, spring, and fall, how it, it was worded, whatever order, will remain. And so God is good to us all. Amen. It's just that his saints, we walk with him and we acknowledge where this goodness is coming from. Amen. We have, we are the ones who acknowledge it. And so he gives us grace and glory. Mm -hmm. That divine grace. That's the ones who, he, who, who walks with him uprightly. Yeah. I mean, we, we receive not only just the goods of the land as we, as, as everyone needs it, but we, we receive so much more that divine grace. Amen. That, um, uh, that fruit of the spirit grace that God gives to us, amen, and allow us to, to uh, live according to that. And, and, and he just blesses us. Also, I thought about um, in Matthews, maybe I haven't gotten there yet. Let's go to Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter two. Am I, I I've always wondered, do I pronounce that word right, Steve? Yeah, with the S, Ecclesiastes. Chapter two, you might say it with a different kind of accent, and then, but we know what we're saying, right? Okay, here we go. Chapter two, 20 verses 24. It says, there is nothing better for a man than that he should eat and drink and that he should make his soul enjoy good in his labor. This also I say, 
that it is from the hands of God. Did you hear that, saints? It, there is nothing better for a man than that he should eat and drink and that he should make his soul enjoy the good in his labor. You reward, you're rewarding yourself. Amen. When you're doing the good. But he, Ecclesiastes here, he says, even this, this also I saw. The preacher man said this, that I saw it is from God. Mm-hmm. God blesses us. Yes, he opened doors and make ways for us to be able to survive. We don't just sit back and everything just falls uh, out of the sky and hit us on the head and fall into our hands and we fall into our bed bags and we go home and cook and eat. We labor. Yes, we do have to work, you know, and, 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 and the reason we use that word labor and it's good because God blesses your labor. He blesses your work so you can go home and you can have food, shelter, and clothing. But that labor, that word labor was not found in the Garden of Eve, Eden. It wasn't found. Labor didn't happen until they sinned and fell short of the glory of God. And God put them out of the garden. And from the sweat of his brow, Adam had to work hard. To get the work, to get uh, what he needed from the ground, his labor was hard and it was laborious. But here we are today, still laboring, but God is blessing, isn't He? He's oh, He's blessing. He is blessing us through our labors, and it's okay to be thankful. Be thankful. Be joyful. This is what it says here. Mm -hmm. It's okay. It's better. For a man to be joyful, he should enjoy the good of his labor. Amen. And it's good. And it comes from God. Every, if, when we get to know God and his power and how involved he is to us in this world, we realize without him, we can do nothing. Amen. We would, without God, and there's a song, without God, I would fail. Without God. My life. Oh, so are, are you following this lesson here? Am I, am I on the lesson here? Let's see. Let's take a look at, um, we went to, I want to show you, uh, I wanted to hit on something else. Go to staying with what we learned so far from Ecclesiastes and Psalms. And I'm, you, I'm pointing now at this word grace. I'm keeping this in our, want to keep this in our forefront. Go to James. The book of James, just let's just read this verse for me. The book of James 4 and 6, verse 6, and somebody get 1 Peter 5 and 5. Let's just, just think about the grace of God and, and, and what it means to us. Because mm -hmm. we use that word grace twice already, did we not? Uh, it was in Psalm the reading of Psalms, and we see it in 24. But James uh, chapter 4, verse 6. Who has that? Quickly. Verse 6. I have it. All right. But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And giveth grace unto the humble. Somebody um, uh, have First Peter. First Peter five and five. Thank you, Sister T. First Peter five and five. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Mm -hmm. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility, for God resisteth the proud, and giveth grace to the humble. Mm -hmm. And giveth grace to the humble. Let's thank you, Mother Peace. Thank you so much for my readers. Let's go back. Now keep those two in mind. And let's go back to Psalm 84 and 11. And it says, For the Lord is the sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. 
uh, no good thing will he withhold from them that walk up rightly with him. That grace is the goodness of God that he is laying on us, given to those who walk up rightly with him. He gives, but the proud turns away, he turns away sorrowful, right? Turns away. Uh, God, um, he resists the proud. Turn them away. You know, and so that's why we want to keep our hearts right with God. We want to walk up rightly before him because all good things, it says no good things will he withhold which with from them that walk up. Wait a minute. Is he the one that's holding all the good things? It comes from God. It comes from God. So he will not withhold any good thing. And of, and of course, as we know, as what we ask for, we have to ask for, we can't ask for it to assume, uh, 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 just to, to, uh, bless ourselves. You know, we, we have to ask according to his will. Because his will helps us to spread the grace. Amen. <laughs> when we get it for the, for the purpose that God wants us to have it. So according to his will, because when we do it in, according to his will, we're doing things out of love, right? Out of love for God and for our brother. Amen. So we, now we have, um, Luke. Did we do Luke? Yeah. I don't think we, uh, went to, to Luke. The book of Luke, 11th chapter, following along in our background scriptures. Luke 11th chapter, um, verse one, one, um, verse 13. Quickly. Who got it? I'm, I'm gonna have to, we're gonna have to have one of those Bible, Bible, uh, drills. Pastor, we're gonna have a full day of Bible drills. <laughs> we're gonna see who's really sitting there with their Bibles. Okay. <laughs> Did you all ever do the Bible drill? In church? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's, 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 let's get on this because, um, we're going to test you with your Bibles. And I want some physical Bibles. I'm, I'm going to tell you, hold up, hold it up, hold it up. Let me see. Okay. Close it. Now you ready? Go to. <laughs> All right. Here we go. My thing hit something. It. Yes, ma'am. Read it. If you read that. So this is Fanny. I have chapter 11. Yes. Luke 11, 13 verse. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Mm. Thank you, Sister Fanny. How much more? If we know how to give good gifts, now what kind of good gifts? Now, if you look at what he wants to give us and what he can give us and how much more, because nobody can give the Holy Spirit but God, right? So we can give and give and give, but we never get to that place where we can, where we have the Holy Spirit without God's help, God giving it to us. That comes from God. But he says, uh, if ye then being evil, know how to give good gifts. And I, when she read that, I'm like, well, where did they get the good gifts to be able to give it to their children? Right? <laughs> it just, go, it just goes right back to God. He blessed them to be able to give to their children. And, and, and this is that, this is that common grace. He's blessing those you know, those that he, he's showing his love to the world. Amen. So that the world may one day realize that there is a good God in heaven. So where did they get their good gifts? From God. But God is saying, I got a greater gift than what you can do. He, he, he hasn't uh, just, so that greater gift is what? And he says, how much more? Mm -hmm. to those who ask for it. How much more will he give the Holy Spirit? So he's looking at people. He's being that uh, common grace blessing people in the world. But he's looking at those that's putting their trust in him. 
that's trusting him, that's coming to him, that's seeking him, that's looking to him. And he's saying he would give us the Holy Spirit. All we have to do is ask for it, right? And so that's that's the thing. You got to ask for it. So um, we got that common grace right here, and we got that divine grace where God will give us. But we have to ask for it. But why do we have to ask? Why don't he just give it to us? Why do we have to ask? Because we're his children and we are to show that we love him and that we and that we understand that all good things come from the Lord. I mean, somebody else tell me that those are just my words. What else? Why did I? We're showing that we're dependent on him. Woo. Oh, good, good, good. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And especially for the spiritual things. Is that not right? Yes. Yes, yes, talking about giving us the Holy Spirit. We're dependent on Him. And we trust Him. Uh-huh. We trust Him. All right. Any, any other comments? Any just comments of what you have heard so far? So, Sam, just to let, um, I was just thinking about this verse that you're um, speaking on. Mm-hmm. Um, about uh, giving them to our children. And we... Uh, as humans, we give, um, we can give to our children and we can spoil them. We can, we can give them too much mm-hmm. of what they want. And, and we, we, mm-hmm. and, and I'm talking about me, we <laughs> don't know how to say no sometimes to our children. But being that God is so good and he knows all, he knows just what we need and how much we need it. So that mm-hmm. was just a thought that I had on that verse. Okay, that's good. That's good. Talking about that that common grace, that natural grace where we even grace enough. And, and the thing is, which is beautiful, we can, if we have our hearts set on wanting to know God, we can learn just through the natural things that's happening in our life. And we can apply it to this is how God wants us to be. <laughs> he wants us to, to and, and, and especially in the family setting, that's his biggest Example in that family setting, how the parent, how the mother and father, the husband and wife, are supposed to get along, and, and um, about marriage, and then about children. That's why he used the children right in there. Is it's coming from the parents, but he's the ultimate parent, right? He is the high. Uh, um, he is the, the uh, father in heaven over all of us. But our examples are right in front of us. Thank you, Sister Russia. Our examples are right in front of us. And and Sister Russia said, we, sometimes we spoil. Does God want to spoil us or can he spoil us? <laughs> Come on, Jesus. Spoil me, Jesus. Uh, spoil oh, me, yes. Jesus. Spoil me. <laughs> I agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Why not? We know that we're abundantly blessed. Abundantly blessed when we do the right thing. Beautiful. Abund- he wants to abundantly bless us, and He will. He will. God will. It's His will. It's His desire. It's the reason He created us. He wanted to share His glory on us. Sister Angela, when I think about the blessings, I think about the so many ways you can be blessed. Abundant. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You can be blessed with more love, with more care, with more kindness. Abundant. You know, instead of the materialistic things. Yeah. Lord, bless me with more love. <laughs> bless me with more care, more kindness. You know, I look at it like that. Yeah. Now, maybe before I might have been materialistic. Mm-hmm. Now, when I really look at God's word and I search the scriptures and I read and I study, it's like, you know, oh, Lord, bless me with more knowledge of your word. Mm-hmm. So I can be able to give what you are saying in this word, like you're giving right now to us, Sister Angela. Mm-hmm. You're giving mm-hmm. us God's word. That yes. right there is a blessing. That's a blessing. Oh, the blessings come in so many ways and forms. That's it. That's my, it. My way is like, God bless me with more love 
And I know when we ask for those things, he'll put us in situations so we can see him in that situation. Yeah, where he's like, okay, you ask for more love, well, I'm going to put you in this situation so you can see that love that you asked me to give you. So for me, that love, more love, more caring mm -hmm. for people and and. That's me. Yeah. I, that, I'm that's blessed good. me with more love and more care. Mm -hmm. And that's what I desire. That's it. That's that I abundant love. Material yeah. things with me when I leave. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I and, and that's good. And 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 uh, elder brother brother, my brother James got his hand up. <laughs> yes, he can also bless you with patience. <laughs> that's what she. That's what. And oh boy, do we need that, huh? I love it. The fruits of the spirit, the fruits of the spirit. That's right. He blesses with patience and understanding. And um, I like the, the, the last one, uh, uh, self-control. <laughs> oh, that last one with self-control. How many need self-control? Blessings. Yeah. Um, and there was a, um, there's a scripture. I didn't write it down. With loving kindness has he drawn us. With loving kindness. Has he drawn us? And do you not know? I've I've, I've been working with the, the 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 Sunday school class, and I've been I'm, I'm stuck. The Lord wants them to have foundation. I, I mean, we can't we can't start teaching them about the prophets and all. We can um, there's scriptures in there that we can use, but we need to get a foundation under their feet. And get them to understand what it means to love the Lord, to love God with all their hearts and with all their minds and with all their souls, you know. And so we're, I'm, the Lord has given me how to teach them His love for them through giving them the Ten Commandments. And I'm saying, if no, and you know, God loves you enough to guard you from these things, to tell you not to get involved in these different situations he tells you first to love him and then and then i show I, and you know i just use that i have a, a whole layout and and we're enjoying it and what the lord has given me is how to show them him in it show his love you know he wouldn't he doesn't love you if he don't warn you you know and he's this is how he's showing his love he's warning us and he's keeping you out of trouble if you just listen and, and, and obey, you know. And so we're, we're working on, we're working on that. And then, um, and in that, um, this last section here, I showed him where Jesus said, if you love the Lord, the, the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and then love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said, all of the commandments is right in there. You know, if you love somebody, you're not going to hurt them. And he said, if you love God, you're going to be faithful to him, you know? And so in, in, in that, what, what I'm telling, <laughs> lost my very thoughts there while I was telling you that anybody, what, what did I say before I started that? Somebody help me. I was trying to make a point. My point is in loving kindness, have I drawn you and I'm showing them and showing us how God has uh, shown us love and kindness, even through uh, rebukes and, and even through corrections. That's all loving kind. That's a parent. That's a loving parent that just don't let us do and get away with anything, knowing that we can harm ourselves through these things. And so through loving kindness has he drawn us. And so all these good things, what we call common grace, it ought to lead folks to the Lord. It ought to let them know that there is a God. And, and so, and, and I, I've just been enjoying that lesson that we've gone in Matthews 20, uh, Matthews chapter six, Matthews chapter six, it says, um, in verse 33, and we're from very familiar with this, but seek first. And listen to this before we go to that. It's, uh, let's start at verse 31. Six, Matthew 6, 31. Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or where, or where with shall we be clothed? For after all these 
things do the Gentiles seek? For your heavenly Father knows that ye have need of all these things. See, the reason he said this is what all the Gentiles seeking after. We shouldn't be seeking after things. God is going to take care of us. He says, uh, this is what they seek after. This is what they seek. And before we came to Christ, that's all we were doing. Looking at what we can buy next, what we can do with this paycheck, how we can, you know, where we're going to go and never using, stay down. Never. I'm sorry. That's my cat. <laughs> what time is it? She knows what time I'm supposed to be finished. Never seeking God first. But God says, seek first the kingdom of God. His word says, Jesus saying this and his righteousness. This is where God wants us to be first. Not everything, everything, all that stuff clouds our mind from God. The more we get, the more we got to have, the more. And that's the way the mentality of the Gentiles. But if we seek God first, keep God first in our, in, in our hearts and our souls and in our minds, he says, all these things will be added unto you. That's good. Those are good things, huh? All these things, uh, shall be had added unto you. Verse 30, wherefore, if if he, if God so clothe the grass of the fields, which is day, which is today and tomorrow is cast into the furnace, shall he not much more, uh huh, clothe you, O ye of little faith? Let's keep the faith. Let's be strong in our faith because that's where. You know, we get out of that. We get more than that common grace. God wants to do more for us. He wants to abundantly bless us. Amen. Sister Sister T, I see your hand. Sister uh-huh. Angela, the mm-hmm. conclusion has uh, it has such an impact. You, do you mind if I read a little bit of it? Oh, you can jump on to the conclusion, huh? Okay. And so we That's make sure okay we get it. You. Make sure we and get every- it. Uh-huh. I'm sorry, I needed more light. <laughs> and every believer and every believer needs to know that God designed them to see him. Know his character and let the truth of his goodness lead to a deeper relationship with him. When a believer can see God for who he is, his heart will become stirred to find rest in his goodness and love and seek to be like his wonderful character. Mm -hmm. Remember that God did not make a mistake when he made you, me, and all of us. You may be the result of what someone labeled a mistake. (laughs) But do not Sorry. Mm-hmm. But do not so with God, but not so with God. He gave you your unique gifts that are a part of the calling that is on on your life. And you must remember just how special you are. Really, you are guys, God's masterpiece. And you need to walk and talk in God's goodness with a fresh energy from the Holy Spirit. This was so powerful. That's good. You have to read it. <laughs> Thank you for reading that because so so we wouldn't run out of time and not get to that. So the power. Thank you, Sister T. That, that is good. Somebody tell me, so now that we've gone through as much as we've gone through in this lesson, almost almost done, so what's the power? Did anybody pick up anything about, okay, what is that power that's going to cause us to receive? I, I just gave it away. That causes us, <laughs> that helps us to receive good things from God. What's, what is, what's the power mean in this topic? me if you walk upright, if you obey, 
Mm -hmm. If you humble yourself. That's the power that will cause God to give us good things. That's all we got to do. (laughs) Thank you, Mother Peace. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All we got to do, man, and we can be rich. Rich in love, rich in grace, rich in God's amazing grace, rich in faith. God is wants to bless us. He wants to heal us. He wants to deliver us. He wants to save us, comfort us, and keep us. Amen. And um, thank you for this lesson. Thank you, Mother Peace. Our, t- our central verse says, heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. He wants to prepare us. And Jesus said to them that believes, he gives the power to become the sons of God. Amen. That's in the book of John. At this time, that's our lesson. I'm going to give you back into the hands of our pastor. Amen. 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 <laughs> Let us give Sister Angie a hand clap there. What a wonderful yes, beautiful. she done on tonight. And thank we you. thank God. Yes. She always teaches well, and we thank God for it her teaching on tonight. What a marvelous, marvelous lesson. Power to receive good things from God. Yeah. And I was just thinking, if you live right, mm. heaven belongs to you. Amen. Get that good thing. Heaven belongs to you. But while you're here on earth, he will drop you down some blessings <laughs> that you don't even have room to receive Beautiful. when you walk right with God. And so we thank God for this lesson on tonight. We want to say we thank God for our president, Sister Cheryl. She's on the line on the phone, and um, she's on the men, and we're praying, praying for her. I don't know if she want to say hello uh, before we give it over to Ella Rushing, but we thank God for her tonight, uh, at least being on the line with us. Sister Cheryl, if you're there. I think she muted herself. There you go. God bless you. Hi. I want to say um, thank everyone for the prayers, and I really enjoyed the lesson. And just from that lesson, um, I can hear you, Pastor, saying, walk straight and turn right. (laughs) All right. That's what I got. If we walk straight, turn right. God will bless us with the desires of our heart. Mm-hmm. Amen. Thanks, yeah, everyone. Beautiful. I appreciate all of you. Beautiful. God bless you. And we're yet praying for you, President, uh, that Thank God you. will continue to heal your body and, and you get back to where you need to be. We thank God for you. Just know that we haven't forgotten about you. We praise God for everyone that's on the line tonight. At this time, Ella Russian. We're going to put it in your hand after the last word in this message. God bless you. God bless you, Pastor. Oh, my God. So, Sandy, I'm ready to give you another hand. What a, what a great job. I, I felt like tonight you were a, uh, a big wheel truck driver driving an 18 wheeler because you shifted a whole lot of gears tonight. And uh, you covered some ground. And I paid attention. You started out, Sister Angie, with Reuben, Jacob's son. And uh, the Bible talked about him being unstable as water. And you made me think about this verse that we have in our lesson, Jeremiah 5 and 25. And it says, your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins have withholding good things from you. And that's the same thing that Mother Peace and Pastor summed it up with. If we live right, if we keep our lives right, and in order for us to be blessed, we cannot have sin and iniquity in our lives. You covered that. Then... We, we have to walk upright and keep our lives clean in order to be blessed. And you talked about sin in the garden. And then you came back to grace, the grace of God in James 4 and 6. And then you circled back to Psalm 84 and 11. And uh, his, you said his will helps us to spread the grace. And then you capped it with Matthew 6 and 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. And it's, it, it's so profound the way that you covered the lesson. I appreciate you, Sister Angie, um, you. doing your due diligence and just letting God the Lord use you. you. Thank you so much yes. for how you taught us tonight. We appreciate you. Father, thank you for your goodness and your mercy. We are so grateful. I'm grateful to be a part of this Faith Temple family. Every household that's represented here, every heart and every mind, 
God asks that you would touch and strengthen us, oh God. Give us what we need on tonight in the name of Jesus. Bless the bereaved families and continue to strengthen us name by name and need by need. Thank you for our teachers that take their time, Lord, to dig into your word and bring out the engrafted word of truth, which is able to save our souls. Thank you for their diligence and their faithfulness. Continue to bless them and strengthen them and give them everything that they have need of in the name of Jesus. Bless our shepherd continually, continue to give him the wisdom and the knowledge, the understanding to lead your people so that we will walk upright and be the faithful people you've called us to be. We'll thank you and praise you for it in Jesus' name. Jesus. And all of God's people said, thank God and amen. Thank God and amen. <laughs> amen. God bless you, Elder Russian. We thank God for that wonderful, wonderful prayer. Once again, Sister Angie, what a wonderful job you have done. Uh, let's remember Sister Rashida's family in prayer and also the Hendersons in prayer, in bereavement. Thank God for each and every one of you. I love you. And there's not a thing in the world you can do about it. God bless you. We thank God for you. God bless you, Pastor. Thank you for the opportunity. Good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Good night, family. Sweet dreams. Have a good night. Angela, Sister Angela. Sister Angela. Sister Angela. Sister Angela. Love you, Mother First Lady. Good night. Good night.